Nguyên xin trân trọng kính chào quý vị khán thính giả. Thưa quý vị, trong chương trình tập 2 ngày hôm nay, tôi xin được gửi đến quý vị cuộc phỏng vấn tiếp tục của chúng tôi với lực sĩ trẻ Jeff Morgan. Anh là một lực sĩ trẻ sinh ra trong một gia đình do Thái và lớn lên ở California. Sau cuộc thi đấu thể dục dụng cụ, anh đã được xác nhận là một huấn luyện viên cá nhân. Sau đó thì anh chuyển sang làm việc ở bên Do Thái và học tiếng Hebrew lúc mới hơn 20 tuổi và trải qua thời kỳ tập luyện tâm linh trong hơn 20 năm. Sau hơn 20 năm thiền và tập luyện tâm linh, anh thấy mình xuống tinh thần, lo lắng, sợ hãi và tuyệt vọng. Sau nhiều lần nghĩ đến chuyện tự tử, Chúa Giêsu đến với anh, vợ anh và đứa con trai lớn cùng một lúc và cứu gia đình của anh. Sau đây tôi Uyên xin mời quý vị khán thính giả xem tập 2 của buổi nói chuyện với lực sĩ Jack. Morgan. So it's so interesting until you have children. That's when somehow you just realize it's not about you, your life. Everything you do is not about you anymore, but now it's about your children. Right. Is that like coming from a natural instinct or do you think that's something that God is kind of slowly teaching you over the years? That's a good question. Um, I would have to say that it's the it's the latter. I think it's it was it was God uh, impressing on me, pressing on me to mm -hmm. to become something different than I was. Because I, I even though I believed in what I was practicing mm -hmm. with my meditation and my mindfulness and my you know kindness and um, I couldn't I didn't feel confident in passing that down. Mm. Because I was basically pa basically passing down the religion of me mm. to them, and and in your soul you know that religion I, it, of me yeah. to to your kids it, yeah it didn't it didn't feel right right um, and so when I when I started teaching them those things and I did this is how you meditate this is how you're quiet this is how you quiet your mind the world is so noisy mm -hmm. not that many kids know how to sit still mm -hmm. you guys will be able to know how to sit still it'll be a wonderful asset to you um, and then. Over time, I just really started to, my, my philosophy started to implode. It started to implode and, and break down from the inside because I realized that I was teaching them something and over time I was becoming more and more anxious mm. and fearful and depressed, uh, frustrated with life because life wasn't working out for me the way that I thought it should based on my philosophy. How and long ago was this? This was, um, once I started feeling this way, this was about three years ago, mm. uh, I started to really feel like something is not right with the way that my life is turning out. And if my practice is, and, I, and, and like I said before, I'm a pretty disciplined person. Mm -hmm. So if I read how to meditate properly, if I study how to uh, become more self-aware, um, how to do certain practices in order to bring peace and peaceful um, energy and, mm -hmm. and the peace of mind that, that we're all looking for, um, that I would do those things, mm -hmm. and I would do them correctly, mm -hmm. and I would do them consistently, mm -hmm. and I wasn't f seeing any real progress. Now, I'm going to backtrack a little bit. When I was in my early 20s mm -hmm. and mid-20s, it was great, mm. because I'm a single guy right. traveling around the world, and then I'd find a nice little place on a little mountain that I would just sit and meditate. For and how it long? felt great. Back then. Uh, I could meditate for anywhere between five minutes to 60 minutes wow. at a time. Uh, there was a period of time where I was meditating for an hour and 30 minutes a day for six months straight. Wow. I would just sit and I would do some weird poses and do certain things because I was taught mm -hmm. that those things will raise my vibration and my spirituality to a level that I can attract things into my life that I want. Mm. It's another way of saying the religion of me. Right. What, what do I <laughs> Elevation, want? Elevation, right? Yeah, what do yeah. I want and how can I elevate myself? Yeah. And I look at it now as if you have someone that's drowning, mm. that person who's drowning and can't touch the bottom and they have nothing to hold on to, mm. they can't save themselves. Mm -hmm. They will not be able to save themselves if they're drowning. Mm -hmm. they, need, they need help. Mm -hmm. They need intervention. Someone to be able to give them the hand mm -hmm. and reach them out. And so as time went on, I started to feel like I was sinking mm. below my ability to keep myself up emotionally, energetically, and the more um, pressure and the more responsibility that came into my life mm -hmm. with getting married and having children and having a business and all the things that people have that cause stress, mm -hmm. that that philosophy was not standing the test of time. It was great when I was single, Yes. great when I was dating people, yeah. 
because I could leave them anytime I wanted to, I was a free spirit, mm. right? And so the problem with being a free spirit is that you're free, but you're also susceptible to evil forces, dark forces, things that can take advantage of you. Um, but because, uh, see, we, we think of freedom as I get to do what I want. Yeah. But real freedom is that I get to do what he wants. Yes. And there's joy in that mm -hmm. because there's purpose and hope and all the feelings that are deep rooted that we really actually are looking for are found in him. Amen. Not in I get to do this thing for me. In us, not in us, right? It's not in us. <laughs> right. It's not in us. It's so interesting. The teacher that you share on the YouTube video, mm -hmm. you follow him for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned that there were times when you hear voices in your head mm -hmm. telling you do things or did things back then that you didn't want to do. And same with him too, right? Yeah. It's interesting how he went through that. You, did it ever occur to you that that's not good? Why would you want to follow him? You don't want to get to that stage mm -hmm. or to do things against your will. Like, did that ever occur of the 20 years you practice New Age? Yeah. Movement? Yeah, well, when, when practicing with, with him, um, there were many things that were great about it. Mm -hmm. um, and it was very enticing, which is which what happens. Sometimes young kids, they'll meet someone who's very charismatic mm -hmm. and they want to follow them because they want to be like them. Mm -hmm. And a lot of kids will do that by watching people on television. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they'll take their mannerisms, mm -hmm. they'll take the way that they dress and speak, and they will imitate them. Mm -hmm. And so this person I looked up to, mm -hmm. I imitated. Now, he was clear to point out that the voices that he heard were audible voices, like you and I talking to right. each other right now. My, the voices that I heard were not necessarily audible, they were more impressions. Mm. So if I was walking somewhere and I felt an impression that I had to do something that came to me at that moment, mm -hmm. I felt that if I didn't do that thing that something bad would happen to me. Mm. And so over time it just kept getting worse and worse. Mm -hmm. Now I wasn't following him directly after a certain period of time. It was the first, the first few years mm -hmm. I was. But then I just went off on my own, but he was still there, mm. you know, in the back of my head. And that influence was always there for me, which over time caused a lot of fear mm -hmm. because I didn't know exactly who I should be listening to and where I should be getting my uh, intuition from. Did you ever thought about you should pray to someone out there, maybe to God to help you remove this voice or this fear that in you now that because it's getting stronger and yeah. stronger each day? Yeah. Um, I would just revert back to meditation. Mm. I'm feeling fearful. Well, let me quiet my mind and stop thought mm -hmm. so that I can be feel that peace. And every time I did that, I would feel peace for a few minutes mm -hmm. and then everything, all the thoughts and every, all of my habits would just come rushing right back in. And I thought, why is this not lasting? Did you share that with your wife as you go through this this torturous uh, phase in your life? Yeah, yeah. It, it like it's a good it's a good word because it became very torturous mm -hmm. because I felt that I was being oppressed and held on to by something that I didn't have control over. Why am I fearful? Why am I stressed out? Why am I? Um, um, uh, why have I lost hope? Mm in life. Is it just because I haven't accomplished certain things? Well, just work harder and keep mm -hmm. going, you know, mm -hmm. like, you know, they say, just, just work a little bit harder. Right. Right. And, and that works for some people mm -hmm. in, in this world and, and, on, and for some other people it doesn't. Yeah. Um, so uh, for me over time, I thought this is failing me. Mm. I'm feeling worse and worse. Why? Why? Uh, I want to know why. And mm -hmm. so before I actually let it all go, which I didn't actually let go. It was taken from me. Mm -hmm. uh, before, I, before that happened, I actually went through a period of time where I was trying to actually ramp it up again, mm -hmm. take it to another deeper level so that I could really hold on because I just didn't want to admit that everything that I'd been practicing for the last 20 years was wrong. <laughs> False, we, we, right? don't, we don't want to <laughs> say we're wrong. Right. And that's the, the human ego and, and pride mm -hmm. Uh, is so strong within us that we don't want to say, even though I've been doing the wrong thing for 20 years and you've seen me do that, um, I was wrong. And uh, one day, I just remember this, I, I was um, laying on the floor with my wife in, in our bedroom and I just, I was at, I, I had no hope left mm. for life. And I didn't tell her this, but I was having some suicidal thoughts. Mm. I don't even want to be here anymore. I've tried so hard, I'm a disciplined kind of person, I've worked so hard in so many things for so long, and I haven't achieved anything. Mm. That I really consider 
worthwhile on this plane. Mm -hmm. Now I had my family, which was a huge blessing mm -hmm. because that was the thing that kept me alive. Mm -hmm. So looking at them, I said, well, I can't take myself out of this world because it would be too painful for them. So I said, I I'm not that selfish. So I don't want to do that to, to them. Mm -hmm. I don't mind exiting the world, but I don't want them to have to carry that burden with them for the rest of their lives. So that kept me going. Xin quý vị khán thính giả vui lòng giữ màn ảnh SPTN. Tổ Uyên sẽ trở lại trong giây lát. That moment when you were lying there with your wife, did you share why life is so not good for us? Or you were just thinking to yourself, but you didn't really share out loud to, to your wife? What I shared with her at the time was something that I was so hesitant to say for so long was, I have no idea what I'm doing. Mm. Was she worried that time <laughs> when she heard that from you? Of course. Mm. Of course, because she was worried that I was going to do something to myself. Yeah. So I looked at her and I said, don't worry. I won't do anything to myself. And inside my mind, I'm thinking, I want to, but I won't. But I won't. Scary, right? It's scary, yeah. it's scary for her. Yeah. Because she's looking at the person who she looked to for strength yes. um, and to lead the family completely broken. The man of the house. The man of the house. Yeah. And that was a really difficult point for me to be because here she is looking at me completely yeah. broken when I'm supposed to be lifting up and holding up the family. And so that was the moment that, and I'm crying mm. really, really strongly. I mean, wailing. Weeping. Wailing. Oh, wailing. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I could say weeping, like, you know, sniffling right. and some tears, but I was crying passionately. Uh, you didn't hold passionately, back. Right, right. Passionately crying, saying, I don't know what I'm doing anymore. Mm. I'm a failure. And so I got to the point where I felt that I've completely failed. And not just them, but life. I, I, life, I don't know what to do anymore. And I broke down and I said, I don't know what to do. And I, I, I'm at the bottom. I lift up my hands. Did you feel his presence there? Did you feel Jesus' presence there with you at that moment? Or did you just... No, at, at that moment it was surrender. Mm. And I didn't know who I was surrendering to. Mm. He knew. Um, he knew. He knew. He knew that he had to break me yeah. in order for me to l allow him in. Yeah. And so I said, I don't know what I'm doing anymore. I surrender. I let go. Mm. And that was the turning point. Because over the course of a month and a half, life changed for me and my wife and my children. 180 degrees. Jesus. <sighs> He's so gentle. <laughs> <laughs> he, he appeared to me, he appeared to my wife, and he appeared to my older son all at the same time, mm. separately. These kind of things break marriages up. Yeah. One person comes to faith, the other person is an atheist. These kind of things break marriages up, people get divorced, this hurts people, comes in between relationships. But God was so good. Whew. He knows your heart and he knows what you're yearning for. He knows your desire. And yes. only you, your wife and your sons as well. Right. That's the best part of it is that he knows when we are at the bottom and when right. we cry out to him, when right. we're so lost and broken, he just gently just come in and just lift us up. Right, and I want to make a point that that I wasn't looking for Jesus. My wife was not looking for Jesus. None of you we, guys were looking for Jesus. Right, we grew up in a Jewish family. <laughs> Her parents are Jewish, my parents are Jewish, their parents are Jewish, everybody's Jewish. And, and, and most of the family loves being Jewish. Yeah. Now, I had some resistance to it growing up, but most, you know, they love to do the traditional Jewish ceremonies, and every once in a while maybe go to temple, and every Friday night have a Shabbat meal and and so this was ingrained in us growing up 
and you're born Jewish, mm -hmm. you know. And so we weren't looking for Jesus. And in the Jewish religion, um, really, as long as you're Jewish, mm -hmm. if you want to practice anything else, that's great. Mm. If you want to practice Buddhism, Hinduism, if you want to take some of Eastern philosophy, basically, as long as you're Jewish, and if you're doing those things, it's okay. Mm -hmm. And there's joy in that, uh, not necessarily deep joy, but there's joy in that because you feel free to do what you want. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's kind of another version of the religion of me. Mm -hmm. um, and so, um, Jesus was really the last thing we were looking for, which was why it was so powerful that he showed up to me and my wife and my o older son at the same time separately, meaning my son would go out, my wife would go out, and I would go out and we would all have these moments where we would encounter something about Jesus. And over the course of a month and a half, we felt that we were being brought back to life wow. through no effort wow. of our own. You're and that, use that's right the here. most amazing yeah. part is that, it, that, that 20 years of effort 20 years of practice and discipline, which is really what most religion is about. Mm -hmm. Practice, discipline. Doing good works. Doing good works. Mm -hmm. And when you do those things, you really, and if you talk to anybody who's religious and you ask them, you've been doing this and this and this for this many years, are you sure about where you're going? Mm -hmm. And nobody can say, yes, I'm sure, <laughs> because it's not up to them. Right? So they, then they know it's not up to them. It's up to the final decision of God. Mm -hmm. To choose for them if their good outweighs their bad. And in my opinion, that's a very scary life mm -hmm. to lead. Mm -hmm. So as Jesus is appearing to me in a book and in a television series and on a, on a you know, see, a, a cross, and I, I'm, I'm being drawn in, mm -hmm. and I meet people that are extremely pivotal pivotal, these, these, these encounters with people that were so obviously placed there to bring me into a relationship with Jesus that it was really undeniable. My wife was having those same experiences at the same time, and my older son was having those experiences, and he was nine at the time. And so we all started coming together and having these great conversations about Jesus, and my wife was having a hard time with it because she wanted to remain Jewish, and she didn't understand how she can mm -hmm. believe in Jesus because they teach us that we shouldn't believe in Jesus. Sad, right? It is sad. Yeah. Uh, and, and how she can be Jewish and believe in Jesus. Wow. She had a conflict there. That's what the enemy wants most people to, to do, is put that conflict in our mind, right. so, then we would, so then they would draw us away from Jesus right. instead of bringing us closer to Him. Right, and so a lot of our, our friends and family, they ask, well, why would you choose this? Why would you choose this way? when we know that it's not only not the right way, it's also a more difficult way. Mm. Why would you choose this? And we didn't choose it. That's the thing. We gave in to it. Right. We surrendered to it. But thank God it happened to us and we were receptive. And I believe that, that Jesus is calling everybody. Yeah. Their degree of receptivity, uh, receptiveness or receptivity is, is different from person to person. Mm. And so some people, it just bounces right off of them, mm. like it did with me 10 years ago. Mm. And some people are so ready for the word mm -hmm. that they just say, reveal yourself to me. Help me. I need you. I no longer have the answers. And then they are an open vessel for the Lord to come in and do his, his work. Amazing. Yeah. So how has your life changed since Jesus you know, comes into your life, into your wife and your sons? How have you... Your lifestyle now, how, how has it been different after Christ versus before Christ during the new age? And in terms of fitness and dieting, how that has changed your lifestyle now? Yeah, well, when we talked before the interview uh, yeah. started, you, you mentioned things um, that you wanted to f get out of yeah. when you came to Christ. Yeah. And everything that I was doing at the time with fitness, with bodybuilding, um, with uh, be representing the vegan movement, I wanted to just get out of. Mm. I wanted to stop it all because I, I needed to clear off everything to make sure that it was what he wanted me to do. To make sure that it was in alignment with what God wanted for me, for him. And so basically I just disconnected from everything that I was doing for about six months. Wow. Just prayed, I just prayed. And normally I would meditate, yeah. but now I was praying.
and I was talking directly to God, and I was praying in the name of Jesus, and who in, in, in Hebrew we, we call Yeshua. Um, I was praying to him, we have an intimate now, we have an intimate relationship now. Oh, yeah. yeah, and so I actually can talk to him through Jesus mm -hmm. and through the Holy Spirit. And so um, I was just praying for about six months, what do you want me to do with all of this? I have a YouTube channel, I have tens of thousands of followers. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about things that I no longer want to talk about. No desire, right? Can you change this for me? And if you don't want to change it for me, you know, help me get out of it. And so six months later, I just felt like I still need to do it. Mm. And so, you know, for, for, for me, my channel, um, I, I want it to kind of, God willing, evolve into faith-based, mm -hmm. you know, instead of just plant-based. Right. You know, faith-based, <laughs> plant-based, lifestyle because I believe in, in physical health. I believe in taking care of the body, the temple of the Holy Spirit. Because a lot of people in this world are praying for help out of sickness. Mm. And a lot of the sickness is caused by dietary habits over the course of time. We have heart disease, we have certain things that people are suffering from, mm -hmm. diabetes, and, and, and some of them are genetic. Mm -hmm. The food can, can ignite bad genetics, but it can also cool off bad genetics, light them up or turn them off. So I've noticed that that happens, especially within me when I eat something and my system lights up. I don't eat the thing and it doesn't light up. Wow. You know, so we have the opportunity to take care of our bodies mm -hmm. to last longer on this earth, to have a greater impression on this earth, to do more of God's work on this earth. Now I believe we also all have a date with God mm -hmm. that we cannot um, neglect. Yeah, and we can't change. Yeah. Because he already knows us. Amen. He already knows what's going to happen. But there are people that are inspired to become healthier, and I think that's an important part of being a great example um, in doing the work of God in this world. So I was like that. You know, every every few words was a foul, you know, was foul language. And I would work out in the gym and I would put my weights down and I would say something, you know, foul because I would train so hard. Right. And it was just a, a, an expression. And through the New Age movement, there, there people practice a lot on self-control, mm -hmm. changing your behavior, mm -hmm. changing your habits by working on techniques in order to do that. And over the years, those things basically just failed because they would last for a little while and then they would come back. And they would last for a little while and they would come back. But, but overnight, I couldn't swear anymore. It wasn't that I was trying to and I didn't. I couldn't. So the swear words couldn't come out and they felt, they felt wrong. It felt wrong. It felt like and, and one of the, the best ways I've had it explained was when the Holy Spirit is indwelling you, which when you receive quiet, uh, Christ, you, the, the Holy Spirit comes to live within you. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit does, sanctifies you and purifies you. And that which is not in alignment with the Holy Spirit is dissolved. Right. Or becomes, you become convicted of it. Right. Right. right? This feels now wrong. Right. And the Holy Spirit does that really well. And so, so not only did my relationship with my family change, the way that I relate to myself as a son of God cha totally changed. It gave me purpose, it gave me hope, it gave me a future. Amen. And really, all I want to do is talk about Jesus. For those who are watching this interview today, um, do you want to have a message you want to share with people out there who never heard of Jesus ever in their life? Ever? There are many tribes out there in the world. There are so many, or don't believe in Jesus because they think that Jesus is so strict. And there's this Christian religion where it's too complicated, like you said. Do you have a message for those? Jesus is the way. And I know that now. I have found the truth and truth. Amen. And they are all under the name of Jesus. Yeshua HaMashiach. That's right. That's right. Jesus the Messiah. And so, when you look at it that way, it's a very difficult decision, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it's a very simple decision. Mm -hmm. There's one way. If, you were, if, 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 if 50 different ways were laid out before you mm -hmm. to ultimate riches, mm -hmm. wouldn't you like to know the way? All of them were wrong but one. Wouldn't you like to know which one that is? Or would you like to have to get to the end of each one before you find And that's what many people do. And that's what most people had to go through, and that's what I had to go through. I went through 49 different ways before, I, before Jesus showed me the way. 
Amen. And it's just a surrender. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. The Word of God is in the Bible. The Bible has been translated into more languages than I could even imagine. The, the Word of God is available to everyone. And if we are longing and searching and seeking for truth, one of the best things we can do is ask for revelation. Ask for help. Instead of, I know, and he knows, and she knows, and I will gather what they say, and do what they say, in your quiet space, ask for help. Ask for Jesus to reveal himself to you. He promises that he will. So I, I, I like to say that to, to anybody out there that's listening. Because everybody wants peace. Everybody wants to release the baggage that's been accumulated over the years. And that's possible through Jesus. And only through Jesus. Mm -hmm. So yeah. true. Thank you so much, Jeff. Dạ vâng thưa quý vị, cảm ơn quý vị khán thính giả rất là nhiều đã theo dõi tập 2 của cuộc nói chuyện của Tô Uyên với Jack Morgan ngày hôm nay. Và xin hẹn gặp lại quý vị vào chương trình kỳ tới.